Irrational integrals involve the square roots or nth roots of rational expressions, and some of these we can evaluate. Let's consider a rational function r in the variables x and y. So this means that r is a quotient of two polynomials that are polynomials in the variables x and y. And let's consider the integral of r of f, x and y with respect to the variable x. So we will consider y to be a very specific function of x, uh, a few types. For example, y could be the nth root of ax plus b with a and b being constants. And then this u substitution where we set u to be the nth root of ax plus b turns the irrational integral of that rational function into a rational integral that we know how to evaluate. Let's see how. So with this u substitution, that means that u to the n must be ax plus b. And that means that x itself is u to the n minus b divided by a. And therefore dx is n over a times u to the n minus one du. And this shows us that the irrational integral is transformed into an integral that involves powers of u in, in x or simply u itself and again powers of u in dx. Therefore it is a rational integral and we know how to deal with those by now. Similarly if y is the nth root of ax plus b over cx plus d where a, b, c, d are constants, uh, the, uh, substituting the entire nth root as our new variable u in a, can be shown in a similar way, turns the irrational integral of r into a rational integral in terms of u. Now, uh, the integrals where y is the, the square root of a squared minus x squared, with a being a constant, can be turned in, into a trigonometric integral using the substitution x equals a times the sine of theta or x equals a times the cos cosine of theta would also work, turning again the irrational integral into an integral that involves trigonometric functions. Now let's see how and why that works. So for this uh, we can consider a right triangle that has for one of the acute angles theta and the form of this square rooted expression suggests that the hypotenuse should have a length a and one of the legs should have a length x. Uh, the choice of which leg I'm uh, labeling by x is arbitrary, but if I label the legs in this way, that means that the other leg must have a length of a squared minus x squared. And from this, uh, we simply see that the sine of theta is opposite over the hypotenuse, that would be x over a. Therefore, x is equal to a times the sine of theta. And the other leg would be uh, the cosine of theta times a. So therefore that square rooted expression is being turned into a times the cosine of theta. This way the integral uh, that is this irrational integral is turned into an integral that involves the sine of theta and the cosine of theta in them. So it's a trigonometric integral. Similarly if uh, y is of the form a squared minus x squared, uh, a squared plus x squared then using the substitution x equals a times the tangent of theta, we'll turn the irrational integral into one that is trigonometric. Let's see why that's true, again with a right triangle, uh, which has theta for one of the acute one angles. Now this square rooted expression suggests that the legs must have length a and x respectively. Again, the choice is arbitrary, but if I choose the legs in this way, that shows that the tangent of theta is x over a. In other words, x is a times the tangent of theta. And then the hypotenuse is, of course, a squared uh, plus x squared under the square root. And it shows that uh, the cosine of uh, theta is a over that square rooted expression, or in other words, that square root of a squared plus x squared is a over the cosine of theta or a times secant of theta if you like. Now as for the last case, 
we have the square root of x squared minus a squared for y and in that case uh, the substitution x equals a times the secant of theta will turn the trigonomet the uh, irrational integral into a trigonometric integral for this the corresponding right triangle would be uh, something like this theta for one of the acute angles and then again the form of the square root of expression suggests that this triangle must have x for hypotenuse and a for one of the legs now if i want um, the secant of theta to be x over a or the cosine of theta to be a over x then i would have to give this leg the label a and then the other leg is has the length square root of x squared minus a squared and then what we find is as i said x is equal to a times the secant of theta and the square rooted expression is um, the tangent of theta is that square rooted expression over a so in other words the square root of x squared minus a squared would be a times the tangent of theta and so that shows how this irrational integral is being turned into an integral that involves trigonometric functions okay let's solve some problems related to irrational integrals evaluate this definite integral this um, irrational integral pause the video and input your answer in the box hope you paused it and have inputted two for the value of this definite integral so what we could do is uh, write this as 2x plus 1 to the power negative a half and then use the power rule um, but let's just use what we've learned calling the entire square root our new variable uh, u so u equals 2 uh, the square root of 2x plus 1 means that u squared is 2x plus 1 which means that uh, u squared minus 1 over 2 is x uh, which means that uh, u du is dx and as x is equal to 0 then u is equal to the square root of 1 or just 1 and whereas x being equal to um, 4 turns u in, into the square root of 9 or 3 and therefore the original integral integral from 0 to 4 of 1 over the square root of 2x plus 1 dx turns into the integral from 1 to 3 of 1 over u times uh, u du the u's cancel and we are left with simply the integral of 1 from 1 to 3 so that is 3 minus 1 that is 2 let's look at the next question which substitutions would be the most effective for, for finding the following irrational integral? So pause the video and select your answers now. Okay, so substituting um, x equals the sine of theta or x equals the cosine of theta would both work. Well, let's go with the first choice. So x equals the sine of theta means uh, that dx is cosine of theta d theta and um, the one over uh, the square root of one minus x squared is therefore the square root of one minus sine squared theta that is cosine theta and then this integral is turned into the integral with respect to theta of x squared so that's sine squared theta times the square root of the expression which is the cosine of theta and uh, dx which is cosine of theta again uh, so that's cosine squared theta d theta that's a trigonometric integral and we'll learn how to deal with those uh, in a follow-up video let's look at the next question which sub substitution could be the most effective in for this irrational integral pause the video and make your selection now in this case uh, you could substitute u equals x squared plus 4 for example because the derivative of x squared plus 4 2x uh, can be made to appear there using appropriate constant multiples but let's just go with the trigonometric substitution so let's set x to be 2 times the tangent of theta that means that dx is um, 2 times secant 
squared of theta or 1 over cosine squared of theta d theta and that also means that the square rooted expression the square root of x squared plus 4 is then the square root of uh, 4 tangent theta, tangent squared theta plus 4 that uh, square root of 4 can be factored out and then we are left with the tangent squared theta plus 1 um, which can be written as 1 over the cosine of theta so it's 2 over the cosine of theta, theta or uh, 2 times secant theta so then this integral can be written in terms of theta as 3 times x so that's 3 times 2 tangent theta so that's 6 tangent theta the square rooted expression is 2 times the secant of theta and uh, dx itself is 2 times uh, secant squared theta so in the end what we see is a trigonometric integral in involving tangents and secants let's look at the next question which substitution would be the most effective to evaluate this uh, irrational integral so pause the video and make your selection now in this case it would be x equals the secant of theta that would mean that dx is equal to the secant of theta times the tangent of theta d theta and the square rooted expression the square root of x squared minus 1 is the square root of secant squared theta minus 1 so that would give us uh, the tangent of theta just using trigonometric identities and so what we end up with is this x integral when written in terms of theta being well x cubed is um, secant cubed theta the square rooted expression is tangent theta and then dx is secant theta times tangent of theta so again we end up with a trigonometric integral that involves only the secant and the tangent of theta okay i hope you enjoyed this video and i'll see you in the next one